Today's lesson is on graphing sequences. So taking the ordered pairs that we've been learning about for the last couple days and turning them into a graph. So question one is going to give you a sequence and ask you to turn it into a graph. So the first step is going to be to make a list of ordered pairs out of your sequence. So as you can remember from yesterday's lesson, the first term has a one in front of it and then we put the term itself. So it'd be one, two. And then we'd have two and our next number is four. And then our third number is six. Our fourth number is eight. And our fifth number is 10. So that's how it would look as we turn them all into ordered pairs. Step two is to plot the ordered pairs on a graph. So they'll give you a graph that's all set up and we need to fill in our ordered pairs. So our first point is one and two. So we need to go to an X value of one and a Y value of two. So I'm gonna take my color and put my first point there. Then my next ordered pair is two and four. So remember it's always X and then Y. So I'm going to X two, Y four. So then as I look at my next one, three is going to be my X value and six is going to be my Y value. So I go three and six. So my next point should go here. And then I've got four and eight and five and 10. So we're making sure our first number is always our X value and our second number is always our Y value. Now, question B, for this is going to ask you, can the points be joined by a straight line? So if you take your ruler and you can line them all up and you should be able to draw a straight line that passes through each of them, but my pen is not drawing right now for some reason. Okay, but you can see that it should line up. So when I move my ruler away, it does create a straight line. So our answer would be yes, the points can be connected by a straight line. For questions two and three, you're using all the same steps and kind of way of solving it as question one. Question two will give you a sequence and they're asking you to graph it and they're all increasing sequences. So the numbers get bigger Whereas for question number three, they're all decreasing sequences, so the numbers will get smaller, which is why it's starting at 12, 8, 4, 0. Question number four is just asking you to look at the graphs that you made in questions two and three and asking how are graphs of increasing and decreasing sequences different. So what you want to pay attention to is what direction does the line go. If you were to connect those dots with the line, does it go up or does it go down? Okay, so you'll need to articulate which one does which. After question four, you are going to have a short investigation. So this investigation is going to introduce some new vocabulary and this vocabulary is linear sequence. So a linear sequence is when you plot points on a graph and they can be joined by a straight line. So this has to be like a ruler line, not that it goes up and then down, but one straight line. So the first part of the investigation is part A and they ask you to figure out which sequences from question one, so you have to turn back the page, are linear and to find the gaps. So they actually give the first one to you and they say that the second graph is linear. So they've put the sequence on the line. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And then to prove that it's linear, you can find the gap. So to get from 3 to 6, we add 3. 6 to 9, add 3. 9 to 12, add 3. 12 to 15, add 3. For part B, you're kind of doing the reverse. So you're still looking at those graphs from question one and you're saying which ones are not linear. So I'll give you the first one. 
if you looked at your graph number one, it should not have made a straight line and your numbers should be one, four, six, 12 and 15. So now we find the gap. So from one to four is plus three. From four to six is plus two. Six to 12 is plus four. 12 to 15 is plus three. Part C asks kind of the final question for this. How can you tell by looking at the gaps whether a sequence is linear or nonlinear? So if we look at the linear ones and you look at their gaps, you should notice that they are all the same, whereas the nonlinear sequences, the gaps change. So it should make sense that you'll find out that linear sequences have the same gap between each of the numbers whereas a nonlinear sequence has different gaps between each of the numbers. Question five, we'll start by asking you to decide which of the sequences is linear by finding the gaps between terms. So I'll just go through one example. So to get from eight, 10 to eight, you subtract two, and then to get from eight to five, we subtract three, subtract two, and then subtract three to get to the next term. So this one would be non-linear. Part B asks you to check your answer by graphing both sequences. So I've already shown you how to graph, so I'll let you do that on your own. But just remember that the linear sequence, you can connect the points with a ruler. So they all line up in a straight line. So a ruler, the straight edge, should touch all of the points. So question 6a starts by asking you to find the gaps between terms in a t-table. So they'll give you a chart and you're finding the gaps between the two numbers in the terms, not in the term numbers. So to get from 4 to 6, you add 2. And to get from 6 to 8, you add 2. <coughs> Question B is going to ask you which sequences are increasing. So to find which ones will have little numbers um, are increasing, the numbers all need to go from least to greatest. So this example that we have here would be an increasing sequence. Question C is going to ask you which sequences are linear. So to tell this, you would look at the gap, and if the gap is the same, it's linear. So we could go, oh, yeah, the gap is plus 2 for both of these. So this is also a linear sequence. For the last part of question 6, it's asking you to match each t-table to its graph. So they'll have three graphs there, and what you need to do is just look at these sequences as ordered pairs and be able to match them up with the graph. So for this graph, the first ordered pair would be one and four. So if you looked at the graph and the, X, the first dot was at an X of one and a Y of four, then that would have the right first point. And then you could look at the next two to see if they all match. That you will hopefully learn the final section for this lesson is another investigation, and this investigation is exploring how you can tell from its rule whether or not a sequence is linear. So for question A, they're going to give you a rule, and you have to write the first four terms and find the gaps. So if they tell you to start at one and add two each time, then you know that your first number is going to be 1. Whatever they say to start at becomes your first number. Now they tell you to add 2 each time. So that's going to be our gap. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. So I'm going to go through a few more examples, but I'm changing the numbers from what they are in your workbook. So if we had one with multiplying, it tells us to start at 2. So that means that's our first number, and then we need to multiply by 3 each time. So our gap, instead of being addition, is going to be multiplication. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 
And 18 times 3 is 30 plus 24, so I believe that is 54. Our next example tells you to start at 3, so that's our first number. Then we add 6, but then for the next one we subtract 4, so that's our next gap, and then we repeat. So our gaps would go back and forth between plus 6 and subtract 4. So 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, and if you were to keep going, 11 minus 4 is 7. So you would keep adding 6 and then subtracting 4. This one is structured a little bit differently. It just says 3, 8, 6, then repeat. So that's what you put in, 3, 8, 6, and then we repeat. So we start back at the 3. Now we go and fill in our gaps after. So 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6, and 6 minus 3 is 3. Start at three, 13 and subtract 3 each time. So we start at 13 and then we subtract 3 each time. So that will be each of our gaps. So we go 10, 7, 4. The last example I'll go through with you is a division one. So start at 81 and divide by 3 each time. So 81 divided by 3 is 27. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. Question B asks you to predict which sequences are linear using the gaps. So remember, we've learned before that linear equations have to have the same gap. So without checking the answers, just choose one sequence you think is linear and one that's not and graph each of them to see if you are correct, if you can line them up with a ruler. So the final question, D asks you how you can tell from its rule whether or not a sequence is linear. And so here's the one thing that might trip you up. We've said that linear graphs have the same gap. So if we look at our first one here, when we add two each time, yeah, that one's going to make a straight line. But if we look at our multiplying one, our two times three is six, six times three is 18. When we add, it's actually going to go up by four and then go up by 12 and then go up by lots that I don't feel like calculating in my head right now. I'm guessing like 26. Yeah, maybe 26 or 36. Um, so it's actually not linear. So the one thing through doing this exercise is that, yes, it has to be the same gap, but only for addition and subtraction. It does not work for repeated multiplication or division. So the division and multiplication ones won't actually work and create a linear sequence that you can match up with a ruler. Remember that this question also asks you to look at the rule. So yes, it has to be addition and subtraction, so look at what the rules say. They're start at something and add something each time, or start at this and subtract this each time. So those are your only two options, if it's adding the same number or subtracting the same number each time.